Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 16, I'll read. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, he was on his way to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. There's a huge point there I will emphasize. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. The Jewish Talmud says a leper in Israel should stand at least 100 paces, which is about 200 feet or more. The length of this building is 150 feet. So you can see how far away they had to stand up from the crowd. So they stood afar off. They lifted up their voices. That's ten men lifting up their voices. And they said, Jesus. It's the first time in the New Testament where ten men at the same time will call upon the name of Jesus. Master, have mercy on us. There was no me in this. Have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, he didn't touch them. He didn't pray for them. He said, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now, you talk about faith. I am expecting a touch. I get a command. Go show yourself to the priest, which was the, the law. And it came to pass, again, this is the second time he's saying here, came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. Amen. Ten of them. Amen. All of them cleansed. Amen. You know, God doesn't have to do it one by one. He can heal in bunches. <laughs> Hallelujah. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Amen. Fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. But he was a Samaritan. A stranger. And Jesus said. Now this is where my text and my topic is coming in. See I preach like when you go to the restaurant. They give you a menu. Then they bring you some drinks. They give you a piece of bread. Take a time order. You want some appetizers? Sure. Then. What's your main meal? And dessert. Okay? So that's what I do. I will tell you what I'm preaching about. Then I'll give you a few appetizers until I get to the main meal. And this text here is the main meal. And Jesus answered, said, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleanse? You know, Jesus could count. He count everybody here today, you know. Where are the nine? That's my topic. That's a question. Ten healed. Ten blessed. A whole group were cleansed. Where are the nine? Were there not ten cleansed? He wants to know. Where are they? 
The answer is in 18. They are not found. We can't find them. Where are they? They are not found that they should return to give glory to God except the stranger. Watch the double blessing. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Say whole. Some people are half. They're half blessed. They got a little blessing and they run away. They didn't know there was more. That's why you keep coming back to the house. Because there is more. Say I want more. Well you're going to get more. Where are the nine? My subtopic or theme would be the attitude of ingratitude. People who are ungrateful, how do they behave? Versus those who are grateful and full of gratitude. So, my big picture is, this is a menu, healed but not whole. Not whole. Some people need to be made whole. Body, soul, and spirit. Whole man. Some people only care about the body. But as Simon says, I will be, anytime you hear me say Simon says, is uh, Dr. Simon I'm referring to. He said communion is into your spirit man, not just your body. So we're talking about wholeness today. Let me go over the text and run along. Um, finish up as it came to pass that as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through Samaria you would understand if you're a little Bible student that the Samaritans and the Jews had no discourse they didn't like each other they were enemies the Samaritans felt they were better because they built their temple on uh, the Mount of Blessing. Oh, and they said, the lady at the well said, you know, this is where we should worship. Because our father Jacob built this well right here on the Mount of Blessings. We don't have to go to Jerusalem. And he, ex he, uh, he explained, he said, mom, it doesn't matter. Which mountain you worship God on? I'll get back to that. Worship is part of the, the plan. So I'm telling you this to bring this point to you. Although they had no dealings and although they rejected Jesus the Messiah and their interpretation of the Torah, Jesus still went through Samaria. The first point is, there are some things we must pass through, whether we like it or not. There are some places God will send us, whether we feel to go or not, it is on a divine mission. You are not a standalone evangelist in your comfort zone. You will have to go to people who you don't like. And you will have to go to people who don't like you. You will have to go where God sends you to go to. You got to go to Samaria before you get to Jerusalem. I know we all Jerusalem bound, but we don't want Samaria. Oh, let somebody else do that. Let Philip the evangelist go. No, no, no. Jesus himself went. And uh, the question I have for you is, how do you feel when people reject you? How do you respond to hate? People hate your faith, hate your religion, hate your church. How do you respond to that? Say, well, if you don't care, I don't care too? No. How do you respond to people who scorn your presence, speak evil of you, and never want to see you on the property? That's the case here. That's how the Samaritans were thinking. But no matter what they think, we have a message to deliver. We have a story to be told, so we've got to be.
be bold, says Simon. And the message must never be sold. You got to be bold to be told because the message cannot be sold, Simon says. He went through the midst of Samaria. He didn't take an escape route. When you're confronting issues, you got to go for the middle. I don't like extremes myself. I don't like extreme left and extreme right in anything, religion, politics, medicine, anywhere. I am a centrist. In my theology, I'm a theocentrist. I stay in the middle. Jesus Christ is the middle. And I stay with Jesus Christ. And once you stay with him, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Because he brings the Father here. And he brings the Spirit here. He said, I am the way to God. I am the truth about God. And I am the life of God. When you have Christ, you have everything. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Word of God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So you got to be in the middle of it, not on the sides. Some places we must walk center. And Samaria is one of them. Actually, some devils we must fight and some victories we must win. And so are you shunning away from Samaria? Are you going through Samaria? Do you have a message for the Samaritans? And if they don't accept your gospel message, make sure that they see the light in your life. I am working with a special friend of mine who doesn't like church. And he always complains about church people. It's a good friend of mine. What I am doing is not telling him about gospel. I am showing him gospel in my life. Every Saturday when we meet, he must see Jesus in me. And why he meets with me every Saturday is because he loves to talk with me because he sees Jesus. And the best method of preaching is yourself. When the gospel is, is visible in your life, there is no better sermon. I think it was um, one of the saints in India, uh, Saffron Robe. He said, go preach the gospel. Use words if you have to. Can somebody say amen? amen. Okay, let's, let's, let's understand that when people reject you, they reject the Christ in you. It's not easy to feel ostracized. I'll get to that. He entered into a certain village. There met him 10 men that were lepers, which, was, which stood afar off. Living in a society where you have been ostracized, where you have been pushed aside, no fault of your own, they just don't like your color. They don't just like your hair. They don't like your height. They don't like your stature. Just some people are so hateful, they will hate you for anything. And if you're like me and you're good looking, they hate you even more. How do you survive ostracism? Pushed aside. Jesus faced it. He knows what it means to be rejected. As a matter of fact, his own people rejected him. So, learn to deal with rejection because there is somebody upstairs who will never reject you. Never. He came to find you. He came to get you. He came to love you. You are loved. You are loved and appreciated from heaven above. You are somebody special. Don't let people push you in a corner. You are somebody of value if you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Be ready to meet the untouchables. Be ready to meet those who are ostracized. One of the things I would like to see more of when the service is finished, you don't just go and rush and meet your friends. Leave your friends a little bit. Go meet the strangers. Go be the first time uh, visitors. Go, 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 go meet them. That is ministry too. 
Ministry continues after the preaching. Hallelujah, somebody. So, verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Ten men crying out to Jesus. Let me tell you, there is power in group prayer. There is power when 10 people come together. As a matter of fact, God already acknowledged that with Abraham. If I find 10 men, find me 10 men and I will, I will spare the city. Here are 10 men crying with one voice. Jesus! Now what got me thinking and asked them to sing this song was, how did they know that there is power in Jesus' name? Where did Samaritan, the Samaritan, this group, realize that if they would only call on his name, that there was healing in his name, that there was deliverance in his name, that there was a miracle working, working to happen in his name? How did they know the power of Jesus' name? And they all called Jesus, Master. He, they recognize further that he's the master of every situation. He's the master of anything that uh, masters you. He could break the master of sin that's dominating our lives. He's the chain breaker. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Have mercy on us. Let me tell you, when you suffer with a group, it's no longer me, it's us. We're all going through the same thing. And I tell you, when people suffer similarly, they understand life better. When you know that it's not you alone going through this thing. But there are nine other people in the group that belongs, that, that, that belongs to the group that are suffering the same thing. There is compassion for each other. There is feeling for each other. And so they, they cry and say, Master, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. Oh, there is power in united prayer. There is power in group prayer. Hallelujah. Let me give you a joke. It just came to my mind. Appetizer. It's called a appetizer. This guy, he was really huge. I mean, huge. My hands couldn't go around halfway. But he was happy and always jolly. And he, I am so happy because I always have the presence of God with me. So people want to know what he's talking about. He said, and I pray because I know the scripture. And he pointed to himself and said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I know he's in the midst. <laughs> so there's power in group prayer. <laughs> oh, give him glory if you got it. And when he saw them, point taken here is that he sees you. Wherever you are, he sees you. Whatever you're going through, he sees that too. So don't think that God is blind and that he's ignoring your condition and that you are left alone to suffer all by yourself. He sees you. Ask Hagar. She gave him a name. What's the name? What's the Greek? What Hebrew word she used? No. The one who sees me. Rohi is shepherd. So there's a God who sees you, even in your wilderness. When the water in your bucket is spent and you're about to perish he's the one who sees you so 
he saw them. And when they, what they had asked for was mercy. Let me, let me tell you something. Mercy has many faces and many methods that Jesus have used to show mercy. At one time, he touched the leper. Touched the leper. And he was healed instantly. This time, he's using another method. And method would demand faith. So he looks at them and said, go show yourself to the priest. The only time you can go to show yourself according in the Old Testament to the priest is that when you were clean from leprosy. And the priest had to certify, take you outside the camp, certify you were clean and bring you back into with a certificate that you were clean. So he sent them to fulfill the law. So as... These 10 people had faith. I want you to know that. They listened to him. And in their obedient walk. As they went. They were all healed. And all cleansed. All of them. He sees your condition. That you are in no position for reconstruction. That you can't help yourself. That's why he's doing what he's doing in your life. Because your help comes from above. Amen. So and as they, it came to pass as they went. They were all cleansed. But this one guy. So I'm getting to the stake now. One of them when he saw that he was healed. You know, you don't need a doctor to tell you you're healed. You can feel healing happening in your body. If God touches you, you will know you are touched. I will, I will give you a little nail and I tell you, push it in this electric. Put, 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 this, put the nail in this electric outlet here and tell me what you feel. If you don't feel anything, that's dead. But when you touch a living God, and when a living God touch you, you will feel the power. You will feel the glory. You will feel something happening. We don't walk on feeling, but you will know when God touches your life. Hallelujah. There got to be some emotion attached to a miracle. So, and this is, this is where it's getting interesting. And... When he saw that he was healed, he turned back. He was on a divine mission. He was on a divine command to go. To turn back, would you think it would be disobeying Jesus? Here's the point. There are some things that can wait. But worship can't. He turned back. He said, the priest's examination could wait. But I have to come back and give Jesus praise and glory. Yeah. There are some things can wait, but worship can't. There are people who told me they were going to come to church to their four families. Where are they? Where are the nine? Why haven't they turned back to come into the house of the Lord to give him glory? Where are the nine? I'm going to tell you something that you should praise the Lord for. They prayed in a group, but he worshiped by himself. You don't need company to worship God. You might need company for prayer, but when it comes to worship, you could worship alone, anywhere, in your bathroom. Something happened to me yesterday at midday, and in the bathroom I was shouting, and I was praising, and I was giving God glory like I am doing right now. 
I am not supposed to be preaching, but God is helping me. Hallelujah. I have come to give him glory. I have come to give him praise. I have come in the house of the Lord to magnify his name. Hallelujah. The name Jesus. Something could wait. Cutting your lawn on Sunday morning could wait. Taking your car for a wash and a, a detail could wait. Going to the grocery and the mall on Sunday morning is not a vital necessity. It can wait. Come back to the house. If God touched you, come back. Where are the nine? Since COVID, where are the 99? Come back, prodigal. Come back, you who have been blessed and have turned your back on God. Here is the attitude of ingratitude. When people get blessed, and I know what I'm talking about. I know my members. Somebody just sold a house for a huge sum of money. Never thought it. Didn't even put it on the market. Come to me and say, Pastor, oh my God, I am so blessed. Three months since then, I haven't seen them in the house of the Lord. Why haven't they come to give thanks? Because see, this is a problem. Some people take the blessing. Firstly, they want the prayer. Pastor, pray for me. Group, pray for me. Pastor Jerry, pray for me. They want the prayers. They get the blessing and they're gone. Jesus said, where are they? They are not to be found. This is Jesus talking. He's analyzing. He can count. He said, one the ten. Then deeper life had 300 on Sunday morning. Where are the 210? Where are they? Where are they? He's asking the question. And be in the number that he counts in the house of the Lord. Your business plans can wait. Your house plans can wait. Set your priorities right. Pray first and then follow it up with worship. So when he saw that he was cleansed and he came back, he turned back and with a loud voice. It's a time to be loud, you know. If God has done nothing for you, why should you be loud? But you could tell, Pastor Kimbrough, there's something done, God does something for him every hour. Okay, he is giving it his best. He's shouting the praise. He's lifting up the name of the Lord. Now, I'm not saying quiet people haven't been touched, but I am saying you put your hand in that electric uh, we don't have to shout every time. Get that straight. But there are times when you have to shout. When the man at the gate beautiful was healed, he was leaping and dancing and praising God. And he went in the temple with them rejoicing. I know you can rejoice home. I know you can rejoice in your car. But the house of the Lord is the perfect place to come and offer up. Sacrifices of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Where are the nine? See, the nine don't take their salvation seriously. They want a half blessing. Heal me so I could play games. Heal me so I can be a sportsman. Heal me so I can go fishing. Heal you that you could come in the house of the Lord and be a child of God. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This is a great salvation. Because it includes body, soul, and spirit. But when you walk away with a little bit and you don't take the rest, you are a halfway Christian or halfway to glory. And I doubt very much 
that some of these people will ever make it to heaven. Because you cannot treat God like that. You either be a full-time Christian or a half-time backslider. That's the problem with the Laodicean church. Some were hot. Some were cold. God said, I understand both sides. If you're hot, I'll make you hotter. If you're cold, I could warm you up. But you see, when you mix the two, and you're neither hot nor cold, I will have to spew you out of my mouth. You can't live in the neutral zone. You got to be on fire for God. I recommend fire. Say fire. Say fire fall on me. I want to be on fire for God. I want to blaze my last few years with a glory trail. Hallelujah. I want to do all that I can do for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Go thy way. You want to be in your way? Come back and worship. And he will redirect your steps. The others only reached the priest and the temple. After that, we know nothing about them. This was a real story. This wasn't a parable. There were 10 real men, 10 lepers. But this one, he said, thy faith had made thee whole. I am to assume that the other guys got a free miracle and probably didn't have faith. I don't know. But he's commending this one for his faith. You know you can get a miracle because somebody prayed for you and you didn't have faith for it? The mercy of God. That's the mercy. But when you know him personally, and when you've been touched by him graciously, and when the anointing sits upon your life wonderfully, you can do nothing but come back and praise the Lord in his house every Sunday. Two hours of the week, 168 hours, you give God two. I don't see any robbery in that. I don't see any problem with that. You go and sit in the doctor's office half an hour before your appointment. When you get there, they look at you half an hour. They put you in a room to wait for another half an hour. The doctor comes and says, ba 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 three minutes, and you're gone. And you're happy, and you're walking. Hey! We need to treat God better. Because he's given us the best. Give him glory. I'm done here. Paul said, I, preserve, I pray that you be preserved body, soul, and spirit. The whole man. Your outside and your inside. Your downside and your upside. Your around side, your front side, and your... All side. And I would be amiss if I didn't make a spiritual application. Leprosy is a type of sin. And every man born in this world was born with spiritual leprosy. But thank God for Calvary. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us. Cleanseth us. We are all like Naaman. When we met the master... And we went down in the bloodstream. We came up clean like a brand new child. Born again in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah for the blood. I am clean. I am clean. I have no leprosy in my body, soul, or spirit. And when Peter was balking at the fact that God sent him a scroll saying, eat, he said, huh? I never touch anything unclean. And hear what God said? What I have cleansed, let no man call unclean. Let nobody point finger at you and say you're unclean. God made you clean by the blood of the Lamb. Saying it, I am clean. I am clean. I am free from the leprosy of sin. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Give him praise.
Let's give him praise. Give him praise.